to the channel. Uh, this episode we're going to do a little bit of maintenance and installation and customizing. We're going to do some uh, bearing teardown inspection, clean, re-grease them, check the seals, make sure they're all right, check the sh hub shaft, make sure it's clear and clean, no, no damage, put it all back together. We're going to go over bearing part numbers and seal part numbers for the 2,000 pound axle. Um, we're going to look at some of the stuff that's available off of eBay that is not quite right. And I've seen a lot of campers come in with uh, shafts tore up, axles tore up because of this. Um, we're going to cover the two part numbers that a lot of people seem to be mixing up. And then we'll put her back together, get the hubs on the square drop frame. And switch over to customizing a couple of old Jeep wheels and kind of bring them up to modern day looks with some paint and tape. Uh, cheap do-it-yourself, $20 upgrade that'll just make it look outstanding when done. Alright guys, we're working on 2,000 pound axles and hubs this time around. Uh, a lot of your teardrops and your smaller campers and your square drops. That's what they're running, similar to what you get from a Harbor Freight trailer or the smaller landscaping trailers that you can buy at the big box stores, you know, tractor supply and stuff like that. Little 5x8s or 4x8s or even 5x10s are running the small 2,000 pound axle. Be honest, if your trailer weighs 800 to 1,000 pounds, you're not going to load it with another 1,000 pounds worth of stuff anyway. So a 2,000 pound axle does great. It really does. You can go up to 3,500 pounds. You can get them readily available in any width. Uh, it's not necessary on a smaller teardrop, but I've seen it done. If you're going to do some serious rock crawling and you're going to go with a crazy suspension on your square drop and you want to haul extra tires, fuel and stuff in it, sure, run a big heavy axle if you want. Um, for most of us weekend campers, we're going to do a 2,000 pound axle. Um, a lot of people, I get a lot of emails about hubs and the different sizes 2,000 pound axle has a one inch shaft. It's a straight shaft. Both inner and outer bearings are the same size. They are one inch inside diameter plus 164th to give you clearance. Uh, part number. Write this down. L44643. That is your standard national bearing number for your 2,000 pound axle. It is the bearing number for the inside and the outside bearing. Seal. National number. 203025. It is a standard seal for the 2,000 pound axle. You can take these numbers which are etched, laser etched right on them, to any good parts store and they will cross reference it. They will find you the seals and bearings you need. Should you be stranded out somewhere and you burn a bearing up but you haven't scorched the axle or anything, go into a Napa, go into an O'Reilly's, give them your part numbers. Write those two part numbers down and keep them in a book with your other facts on your teardrop. Uh, it'll help you out on the road if you ever get stuck. Uh, the second thing I'm running into is, are the hubs interchangeable? Absolutely. Four lug? You're running 12 inch wheels on your teardrop. You want to slow the bearing speed down with a 15 or a 16 inch tire. Swap them out with a five lug. Same hub, same size, same width, different lugs. That is the only difference. Um, next, some people have come to me and said, hey, we got these bearings off of eBay. We got this hub assembly. It came with hubs, inner and outer bearings, grease seals, bearing caps. They were cheap. Well, sure, they were cheap. They were made in China. Part number L44649. The, the last digit is a 9 instead of a 3. Guess what? That's an extra sixteenth of an inch on your inside diameter race. You slide that on your axle, and you got almost an eighth of an inch of play by the time you're done. No tightening up, no nothing will get rid of the play between this and your hub. You can cram them bearings with 100 pounds torque if you want. It's not going to help. That wheel's still going to... And if you think that little eighth inch at the bearing moves that much, think about it on a 15 inch tire. That's a good inch in and out. 
you will burn it up. You will burn up the bearings. You'll burn up the axle shaft. Don't use them. Just don't use them. Stick with the good stuff. Buy it local. You don't have to get it off of eBay or Amazon. You can walk into a parts store. It may be a few bucks more. But you're going to get the right stuff. Assembly. For those of you who have done it, you guys can skip over this. You know, this is just maintenance and normal stuff that some people know, some people don't. I just get a lot of people asking me to do maintenance on their trailers. And what do I do? Can I do it at home? Absolutely you can. You can do it for $20 worth of stuff at home. Some brake clean, some kind of cleaner, kerosene, whatever you want to use. A little bit of bearing grease and learn how to repack them at home. I'm going to show you how to do that. You have your hub. You have an inner bearing. You have an outer bearing. You have an inner seal. You'll have your nut. In some cases, you'll have a lock washer. If your axle has a flat spot, the washer will have a flat spot to coincide to slide it on there. What that does is stops the force of the turning bearing against this nut. This nut is a castle nut. So it gets its name. It goes on. It gets torqued. And then it gets backed off slightly. And then a keyway will go through the two castle cutouts, through the hole in your existing axle. And then you'll take it and you'll bend the tabs over. And that in turn holds the wheel bearings in and everything good and tight. And you can zip on and happy camp. Not, not a big mystery. You can do this at home. You can pay a shop to do it. There's still some automotive places that you can swing in on the side of the road and for a hundred, couple hundred bucks, maybe a hundred bucks, they'll take them down, grease them, put new seals in them, put them back together where you get you back on the road. Some RV places do it, but it's not necessary. You can do it at home. Be a DIY, do it, just learn it. It's not hard. We're gonna do it real quick. First step is gonna be clean these bearings. I already took them off the axle uh, for demonstration purposes. I'll put it back on the axle and do part of that in my video so you can see how it goes together. Um, but first we're going to clean them. Then we're going to blow them off with air. Don't ever, ever, ever take compressed air and spin the bearing with the air with no lube in it after you clean it. It will scorch these. They will get hot and leave little scratches in them. It's just going to cause premature failure. You don't need to do it. Take your bearing. Wipe off some of the excess grease. You'll see the number there. It'll come clean. I've got some kerosene in here. You can use pretty much any kind of parts cleaner. Clean it out. It's not, the, 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 the cleaner will break down the grease. Get, it, get yourself a brush. Kind of work it in each bearing. Do that to all of them. I'm lucky these are pretty new. Uh, they've only got about a season worth of miles on them. So maybe 5,000 miles on them. Um, they still actually look brand new, as you can see. Even after 5,000 miles, the grease is a little dirty. I'm not going to reuse these seals um, just because seals are $7 a piece. A good insurance just to replace it. It is rubber. It does spin on a shaft, you know. One little tear and you're slinging grease. A lot of people ask me about bearing buddies. Bearing buddies are for in-season touch-ups. They're not for a complete bearing maintenance. They are designed to pump a few greases halfway through your season, four or five pumps in there, just to get fresh grease in there for some of the grease that has slung out and is no longer in the bearing and is stuck inside the hub. Um, you still, every two years, for about eight to 10,000 miles, want to pull these bearings down and do an inspection and a repack and a clean on them. Um, or, you know, if you're putting it away for the winter and you're underneath the trailer, Look at the back side of your wheel. Look at your hub. If you see grease back there, you know that seal's been compromised and it's time to 
get in there and inspect everything and replace what's needed. Um, high pressure bearing grease. You can get it in a tub. You can get it in a gun. You can pretty much get it in anything you want. I have a big 35 gallon jug of it over there because I do a lot of lubes on front ends of campers and cars and stuff like that. So I go through quite a bit. Um, I use the same high pressure bearing grease in ball joints and everything. I, I, it's just some good stuff. High temp never breaks down. doesn't break down too easy. And um, usually after about 10,000 miles when I pull my hubs apart, they're still pretty clean inside. Let me uh, get some grease on my hand and do some packing here and show you how that's done. Use gloves if you want. Put a dollop in your hand as they say. <laughs> We're going to take a new bearing just because these are still kind of drying out from the cleaner I have in them. You take the bearing and hold it like this. You'll see a high side and a low side of the bearing. You're going to pack the grease in from the high side. It will force the grease through this and you'll actually see the grease come out here as you're done. Now you can buy a bearing press if you want and press the bearings down into the grease, a bearing packer. Um, I don't think most people have one. I have one on the bench, but I think we're going to do it by hand just to show you that you can. Your dab of grease in your hand, hold the bearing in, and you curve it into the grease like this. Push down. You'll feel that race drag against your hand. As you push down into the grease and against your hand, You'll start to see it come out. It's coming out the top on in the crack on the top too. Just keep doing that till it comes out. Turn your bearing quarter turn. Do it again. Now remember, if it's cooler outside, the, the grease is going to be cold and a little bit stiffer. It may be a little hard to get it up in there. If it's warmer, the grease is going to be, you know, accordingly. It's going to be skinnier and, and thinner and easier to push through that crack. You can see it starting to come out the top now. Seriously, there's nothing to this, guys. You can do it. Once you start to see the grease come out the crack on the top, that bearing is full of grease. Just turn it again. Five little taps on your hand, maybe. Six. Grease is coming out the top. Turn it. As you can see, it doesn't take a lot. That's why bearing maintenance is so critical. A lot of people don't do it. And you see them on the side of the road. <laughs> um, we've all heard the horror stories. We've all worried about it, I'm sure. You see grease coming out of that baby? She is full. You'll get a little inside there. Just smear it around when you're done. I'm going to wipe some of this excess off just so you can see up close that You see that line between the inner race, the outer race. There's a line all the way around there. That is plaque plumb full of grease now. That bearing's ready to install. You didn't use that much grease even. And who doesn't love plain and grease? Wipe your hands off. We're gonna call this one the inner bearing. Pop her in there. There you go. Three more to go, and this axle is ready to assemble it. I'm going to eat some Wheaties and time lapse it here and not waste your time and let you see me do all of these. <laughs> Again, all you're doing is dragging into the grease and kind of curving it on the skin of your hand or if you have rubber gloves on into the glove you'll feel it drag across your hand and it's that dragging motion that actually packs the grease up in push down and, and kind of flick push down and flick another thing to add if you have rubber gloves on and you tear a glove make sure you look inside that bearing some of that glove material isn't stuck in there um, yeah, that would ruin your day quick. There's all four bearings. 
uh, real time, probably about five minutes. Five minutes to clean each one, blow it out with air, or let it dry like I'm doing here. If you don't have a compressor at home, just let them sit and dry in the thing. They'll dry. That, that stuff evaporates quick. These bearings are clean. You can look through them. They are spotless inside. Like I said, pack them. Next up, we're going to do the seal. We already have that back bearing in. It's a good idea to take some grease, smear in your hub. In between where the two races go in this hub, there's kind of a cavity you can fill up with a little extra grease. Just smear it down in there. There's our grease bearing. And our seal all installed in the back side of that hub. All right, guys, ready to knock this seal into place. They make seal installers. If you don't have one, get yourself a two by four or a little short one or a little short piece of steel or something. Set your seal installer on top of there. Boom. That's simple. New seal installed. I did not show you guys a trick on pulling these old seals out, but if once you get these hubs off your axle and you need to pull this seal, here's a trick. Whack it down like that, it'll pop that seal right out of there. This seal is bad anyway, so we're not worried about hurting it. They do make seal pullers, and in extreme conditions, you can go from this side with a flat tip screwdriver and tap the seal out. Just don't hate your bearing. Um, this guy is ready to install. We're going to put a little bit more grease inside that hub there's room. We'll also put some grease on the shaft itself so that that seal is not dry when we slide it into place. Anything you can do to not scratch that new seal and give that bearing in its new race a little lube right off the start. There we go. I got her packed Pretty decent full of grease there. Didn't take much. Want to take a bearing. That's your outer bearing is what we're going to call that. The inner bearing is of course on the opposite side. Set her down in there. Next we're going to put her on the, on the camper frame. On the axle. Alright let's disassemble this baby. Next up, you got a cotter pin in here. Cotter pin's going through this way. Basically, a cotter pin is a piece of steel. Loop you around on one end and brought back down like a hairpin. Um, when installed through the hole, through the castle nut, the installer will bend each tab over. Usually, cut the back one off and bend it in against the nut. Uh, just take a pair of needle nose or side cuts as I'm doing here. Bring the two ends back together. Pinch it with the side cuts on the head and just walk it up and walk it out of the hole. I know again, a lot of you guys know how to do this. It's basic 101 suspension, you know, wheel bearings, maintenance. But I do get a lot of emails and stuff about it. So with more and more teardrops on the road and more people camping, and a lot of females camping, I guarantee about 80% of the people that have emailed me have been single women out camping. Keep an eye out for them, guys. If you can help them, help them. If they can help you, let them help you. Uh, that's what this is all about, having fun. I know there's a million ways to do this. I know everybody else probably has a better way and nicer tools. I'm just going to be a DIY guy today and show somebody how to do it in their garage on their own camper for 20 bucks and have fun and learn something. Cotter pins out, I'll put her in there. Next comes a castle nut. Just 
just grab a pair of pliers. Let's see how tight this one is right off the bat. Right, not too bad. Spin it off counterclockwise. Some of the older campers, like the Shastas and the old 60s and even 50 models, uh, some of these are actually left-handed threads on one side, kind of like the old automobiles. Uh, I think the engineers thought, well, if that bearing's spinning and that nut does start spinning, we want it to tighten up as it goes, not back off. So they made it opposite, left-handed thread. This one's right-handed thread, like I said. Turn it off. There's your castle nut. We're going to put him down there. This hub will now slide right off. You have your outer bearing, your inner bearing, your seal, your axle shaft, your hub. It may fight you a little bit. This one came right off. That's where the seal rides. I'll we'll make sure that's nice and smooth. There ain't no burrs or anything on it. It feels pretty good. There's nothing on it. As you can see, this shaft is pretty clean. Looks pretty new. Um, yeah, like I said, this camper's only got about, or this hub only got about 5,000 miles on it. So it's brand new looking still. No scorching. You'll actually see scarring on here if the bearing was ever run dry and the race spun on it. Or if they use the Chinese bearings that are out and about right now and flooding the market. I went over the two part numbers so you know them. Don't get the, the, the part number end, ending in nine. It is too big. Can you see that? That is an, uh, an eBay bearing sold to fit a 2,000 pound axle, but look. I'm sure if you had a micrometer, I have one, but get an inside micrometer and you mic this, there's an eighth inch difference between the inside diameter of this and the outside diameter of the shaft. Way too much, not needed. The correct bearing for this shaft is already machined to have enough heat tolerance that it will not bind and it will not be too loose. Give you an idea. It doesn't move. Brand new eBay bearing. Both sold to fit the same axle. Don't do it. Don't do it. Some of you are saying, well, how do I know what axle I have? 2,000 pound axles are one inch in diameter. You don't have a micrometer? Borrow somebody's one inch wrench. It's tight on there. It doesn't move at all. An inch and 16th wrench will have play in it. Guess what the inside diameter of these Chinese bearings are? Inch and 16th. It has play on it. Just looking out for you guys. All right, let me get some grease and wipe on there. We got the old hub off already. It's not in bad shape. I'm gonna put the new hub on. A little grease on the shaft. Like I said, the majority of grease is in your hub anyway. You really wanna put some grease on this so that seal isn't riding on a dry surface at first. Your new hub assembly. Oh, these are the bearings we packed a little bit ago. She's ready to go on. You'll feel a thump. That's the seal going up over that lip back there. See your threads sticking out. Like I said before, some of these will have a washer if your axle has a flat spot on it or a groove cut in it, and that washer. We'll lock it in place. We'll lock itself in place. And what that does is act as a barrier between that inner race and this nut. Doesn't let the bearing rub on this nut. This one doesn't have that. You can see them threads are in pretty good shape, both on the nut and the shaft. That bolt went right, or that nut went right on. Now we're going to preload this bearing a little bit. And all that is is basically you tighten it up. You 
until she stops spinning, you'll feel it's got some drag on it. There's no play in that bearing at all. That is too tight. That will burn up. What we're going to do is we're going to back it off just until the next slot in that nut lines up with the groove. Now there's still no play, but you can see there's freewheeling. It can freewheel now. That'll let everything as it as the grease wears a little bit, it'll thin. That'll give you some tolerance. And then also as it heats up, everything's going to get a little tighter. So that kind of counteracts the thinning of the grease. That bearing is preloaded, tight, and ready to go. Cotter pins. Don't reuse your old one. Don't do it. They're cheap. You can go to Harbor Freight and buy a thousand of them for seven dollars. Just buy them. Just buy a handful of them at your car store for a buck or two. These do come in different sizes. Save your old one. Take it with you if you want. Um, the hole, if you're wondering, you can run an eighth inch drill bit in it. Just hold the drill bit and slide it in there when you don't have your bearing on there. I'll tell you the diameter. I ran a 3 16 in here, so I went over to my box and got a 3 16 cotter pin. This may be a tricky part. You may have to find the hole in there. It's in here somewhere, I promise you. See, that's super tight. We're going to back her off about an eighth of a turn. And that finds us our hole again. I like to install cotter pins in a downward motion. Just in case this end breaks off. If it was in an upward motion, it could fall out get stuck in the cap. You'd hear it driving, but necessarily probably wouldn't hear it when you're inside your tow vehicle. Um, easy. Slide it in. The head will rest in between the ears of the castle nut. Take your bottom. Bend your tab over. If this back one is short enough to bend inside your hub, bend it in there. If it needs to be trimmed a little bit, trim it. Another thing I like to do is pack my bearing cap with some grease before I snap it back in place. This bearing cap is pretty beat up, so I think what we'll do is probably put bearing buddies on this one anyway. So I'm just going to tap it in just to have it closed up so no dust gets in there until we get some bearing buddies. If a cap should start to hang up on you like that. Just tap it gently down with the screwdriver. To go in place. There you go. That wheel bearing is maintenanced for the next season or two even. Um, yeah, it's not hard. Y'all can do it at home. Save yourself some money. Learn how to do it. You'll feel better about it. You'll know it's done right. And you save yourself some money. gang as promised we're going to turn these junkyard jeep wheels nobody looks at into something to go on your teardrop or camper or hot rod or whatever you're doing and something everybody looks at for about 20 bucks um, not going to be hard we're first going to take a light coat sand it down with some sandpaper uh, 320 grit just to knock the shine off we're not going to get into the silver uh, they got a pretty heavy clear coat on these from the factory we're going to just get into that a little bit, rough it up, smooth it out, make it something the new paint will bite to. Uh, tape off some quarter inch masking tape lines. You can get this fine line tape pretty much at any high end store. Uh, Napper or anything like that carries it too. Uh, they make it an eighth inch, sixteenth inch, quarter inch, half inch, you know, all the way up. It's great for doing design work when you're doing painting. I do a lot of skate decks and and uh, rooftops on custom cars and, and stripes and stuff like that on, on gas tanks and stuff and, and that's my go-to. Um, 3M makes the best stuff. There's a couple of new brands out there that are really good too. Um, yeah, give it a whirl. About eight bucks a roll now. 
used to be cheaper, just like everything else. Went up a little bit in the last few years. Um, anyway, we're just going to do a simple pattern in here after we sand her down and clean her up. Uh, just something to retain a two-color image, and uh, yeah, it's it's better than a plain silver wheel or a you know plain gloss black wheel. We're not really worried about this tire. We'll get a little paint on it. Same with the valve stem. We're gonna break them down and uh, mount some new stems and tires in them anyway. <clears throat> Probably gonna leave the cap off, like I said before, to uh, let our bearing buddy poke through there. These are going on the off-road square drop. Uh, yeah, just save your money from buying new wheels and buy yourself an inverter or something, you know, something something that you need new, a new battery or something for your camper. You don't need new wheels. You, you can make these look new on the down low, cheap, do-it-yourself, DIY kind of thing, and be proud of them. Have a weekend, and like I said, you're going to notice them when they're done. Give me a few minutes. We're going to start sanding, tape her off, give it a couple coats of black and a couple coats of clear, and get them mounted on the trailer. <coughs> Another thing to keep in mind, these wheels are five on five. Uh, what that means is a lug pattern. There's five lug nuts, obviously. And then when you measure a lug pattern, you measure from one, skip this one, go over to the opposing lug nut, and you measure from there. From the center of this one to the edge of this one's going to be five inches, or the metric equivalent. You can get these in four and a half on the newer Jeeps, uh, pretty close to the same pattern. A lot of newer vehicles do have the five and a five and five and a half bolt pattern, similar to uh, the trailer patterns, uh, and they'll go right on. You just got to watch the back spacing and the center hub style. Some wheels are hub centric, which means the center hole fits tight on the hub of your vehicle. Some wheels are lug centric, which means the lug nut, the conical seat of the lug nut, the taperness draws up and centers your wheel. Um, I'm a fan of the lug, the conical seat, uh, lug hub centric wheels. They're just easier to fit. If you get into hub centrics, sometimes you need a spacer or you have to grind your hub down or hollow out your wheel a little bit to make them fit. Always take that into consideration. Take a tape measure with you if you're going junkyard scouting like we do and uh, measure your hubs before you go and you'll know. Um, it's not super hard to do and it saves yourself a ton of money on new wheels. It ain't for everybody. Somebody likes new wheels, go for new wheels if you want. This way, save yourself some bucks and do it yourself and have some fun, learn some stuff. Like I said before, we're not going down into the wheel. We're just scuffing up the clear coat and any rough spots you might see. Get around these lug nuts good. You kind of get beat up a little bit. Same with the edge of the wheel where the tire is going to mount. These are in relatively good shape. We got them now, baby. And you can pretty much do this with any wheel. Have to take your old wheels off and clean them up and two-tone them. Even steelies look good if we put a pinstripe around them and a foam cap or something on there, a beauty ring. See the gloss disappearing on the camera, I hope. Like I said, this 320 grit doesn't take much to knock this clear finish down to a, a rough etch, and that's what you want for your new paint to bite into. Or to smooth out any chips or imperfections. This one's got a couple. So the first, after the first year of camping, it'll have a couple more. All right, that quick and easy. We'll take some cleaner and wipe that off. Maybe blow it out with some air a little bit.
get on it with our fine line tape now. All we're going to do is like a pattern around each hole. We're not going to do anything crazy and go around the lug nuts or the perimeter or anything. Just a little something to two-tone it and set it off from a stock wheel. Kind of camouflage it a little bit. And maybe get somebody to say, hey, what wheel is that? This fine line tape cuts just like masking tape real easy. Don't push too hard. You'll cut into the surface of your wheel. I'm curving the ends just a little bit to match the design on the wheel. Don't if you don't want to. It's your preference, guys. There's a million different ways to do it. A million different styles people would like. Pick yours. already ready to go racing you see that when you bend this tape try not to stretch it kind of has memory and if you stretch it when you get it wet with paint it tends to want to lift and go back to its original shape you can stretch it in the corner slightly but as you're pulling a straight line try not to stretch it Hard to do, I know. Okay. One more to go. And we'll press her all down. Wipe her down one more time. And Give her a couple coats of paint and see how she looks. Alright guys, we wiped her down with a clean dry rag. Go around make sure all your tape edges are pressed down firm. Your first couple coats you want to do really light. And the reason for that is, one, it gives a good bite into the underlaying clear, and two, it'll build a ridge up along the edges of your tape to stop it from seeping under. And a heavy coat would allow it to seep under. I'm sure you all painted before. I know all you YouTube professionals out there are going to say, this is a hack job, this ain't the right way to do it, blah, blah, blah. That's great. Do what you want. Say what you want. Live your life the way you want. This is just the way I do it. It's worked for me for years. It'll work for people years from now. Um, like I said, <clears throat> find your own niche. Do it your own way. Show the world. This is just my way to do it. I'm just here having fun, guys. That's all. With some DIY. Turn the shop fan on a second ago. I'm sorry if you're picking up the noise from that. Um, if you don't have a shop fan, some of you guys might want to throw a mask on. Alright gang, we're gonna let that dry for a few minutes and come back at it. Sorry guys if uh, Mr. Baldy or in future episodes my shiny hiney ends up in the videos, let me apologize ahead of time. They tend to make special guest appearances, can't control them. It is what it is. The hair club for men just wasn't for me. Maybe it was for you. Just like painting wheels may be for you, it may not be. I know the latest trend is to bash everybody on YouTube and act like you can do it better. Go for it. You won't find that here. Um, like I said, I'm just here to have fun. 
share some DIY stuff I've done over the years and learn from you guys in the comments. If you're getting anything out of these videos, hit the like button, maybe, maybe subscribe. Um, we're doing this full build all in episodes. Uh, it's going to be a neat little square drop camper and it's going to be up for sale when it's done. Um, like I said at the beginning, we're not worried about these tires or these valve stems. They're going to get replaced. Um, we'll clean the beads, make sure the wheels are 100% ready to go for somebody. They'll be balanced and true and torqued and everything and ready to go. Um, again, like I said, these are 5-on-5 five five wheels. You can get them in 5-on-4.5, which is your standard trailer pattern. Um, I'm going to use a spacer behind these. They're not your daddy's spacers. They're new technology. The billet aluminum in them things have come a long way. My daily driver has over 100,000 miles on them. I have spacers on it. I've had them on there for about eight years now. Never had a problem with them. You follow directions. You put them on. You torque the lug nuts correctly. And they're good to go. If you're worried about it, don't use them. If you do use them, check your torque every couple seasons to make sure everything's tight. Um... <clears throat> yeah, we're going to let this dry a little bit more, peel the tape and put a coat of clear over everything, get it mounted up on the trailer. Sorry about the fan noise, guys. I have an exhaust fan going up um, behind me, so it's sucking all these fumes up and out. If you don't have one, I'd recommend you get a mask on. I should probably have a mask on, too. Um, trying to stay away from it. Just so you can hear me talk a little better. Yeah, I know the price YouTubers pay, right? Just kidding. Be safe. That's coat number two. Right, guys it's been a couple hours she's dry to the touch a little tacky still but we're excited to see the peel off here so Let's see if we can get some of this tape off to see how cool it's gonna look I know some of you guys think eh, this is garbage and this ain't the way to do it blah 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 this is a hack whatever you know this is a DIY on the cheap backyard upgrade to your wheels. We're doing it on our off road camper build. Heck, you could be doing it on your daily beater. I don't care what you do it on. Look at the difference. Get a little feathering where the paint ran under the tape. Take a Q-tip and some paint cleaner, thinner. When it dries, wipe it off. Come right up. Stuff in your line right up. Seriously, guys. That's cool. And cheap and easy. And that looks better than just a silver wheel or an all black wheel. Like I said, I'll clean them little lines up here and there. Throw a set of chrome lug nuts on there. We're probably going to just leave that open for our bearing buddy to stick through. Um, yeah, we'll let this try just a little bit more and then get it on the trailer. Alright guys, I am back. Got the wheels on. As you can see, this off-road square drop's got plenty of ground clearance. Uh, we've got about two and a quarter inches between the inside edge of the tire and the frame. So it should be a articulate okay. Um, paint turned out pretty good on the wheels. A little bit of tape, a little bit of sanding, spray them. We're not worried about that tire. I know we got some paint on it. You saw it in the video. We're replacing them anyway with new tires. Same with the valve stem. Um, that was just kind of more or less a how-to for you guys. 
Um, yeah. I can't afford a $15,000 little square drop. And I build them. I'm here for this. This is, you know, $6,000 tops. Save your money that you'd spend on wheels and buy yourself a nice inverter or something for when you're off grid. Or a shower, who knows, fridge, whatever you want. Um, those turned out awesome. Junkyard wheels, rattle can paint job, a little bit of tape, and one weekend. Uh, you saw the bearing repack in the beginning of the video. It's just easy maintenance, guys. I know most of you know how to do it. I get a lot of emails for those who don't, and that's all that's about. Um, next up, we're going to put some chains on it. The uh, landing gear on it. Set the floor in place. We are going to have a drop floor on each side in the front of this one. Um, kind of added storage and a table with two legs for when you fold your chair, your bed up into a chair, you can actually sit at the table. There will be a door on each side of this in the front uh, and a galley in the back. Uh, like I said before, 120 service, 12 volt with solar, um, stereo, LED lights inside and out. It's going to make somebody a very nice beginner's trailer. And it's going to be all DIY. We're going to cover it all here on YouTube, step by step. You can skip episodes if it's something you're, you're, like you're not building your own frame or whatever, your axles or whatever, skip to it. We're getting onto the body now. So that's going to be the next episode. Hey guys, I appreciate you watching the video. The next episode will be coming of the floor. We'll see you then. Thanks for watching.